Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Khalifa, Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting in Gdabiya Palace and Secretary General Dr. Yasser al Nasser made the following statement. The cabinet strongly condemned and denounced the attack that targeted two Saudi Aramco oil facilities and described it as a shameful terrorist act that represents a dangerous threat to the global energy supplies and the global economy. The cabinet affirmed its supporting stance towards Saudi Arabia and Bahrain's support to all that steps that Saudi Arabia has taken to protect its security and stability. The cabinet urged the international community to act and prevent these attacks. The cabinet also denounced the Israeli Prime Minister's announcements of the Israeli sovereignty over lands in the West Bank for the threat it represents to historic and legal rights of Palestinians and its violations to international legitimacy laws and resolutions. It hailed Saudi Arabia's invitation to hold an emergency meeting of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which reflects Saudi Arabia's keenness on achieving a unified stance and enhancing cooperation in facing challenges. The cabinet also reviewed the outcomes of the extraordinary meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation held recently in Jeddah. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the security authorities to tighten preventive measures around vital establishments and facilities in light of the accelerating regional developments. He praised the government authorities' efforts and the citizens and met some cooperation, which resulted in the success of the Ashura season. He reviewed the improvement of government services quality in various areas to ensure citizens' satisfaction. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications to coordinate with the concerned authorities to improve the quality of telecommunications services in cities and new residential areas. He also directed the Ministry of Education to facilitate students' tra transportation in Salman Town from and to their schools. His Royal Highness directed to encourage employing Bahraini cadres in various service sectors for the competency of the Bahraini human element. The cabinet discussed amending the conditions of handling the housing unit after the payment of its cost and the amendment of Article 3 of Decree 10 of 1976 on housing. The cabinet approved a draft law on professionalism and athletics prepared by the Shura Council and referred it to the legislative authority according to their constitutional and legal procedures. In light of the government's interest to develop infrastructure in various areas, the meeting approved the partially acquired three properties for public benefit in Arad, Psaitin, and Al Bilad Al Qadim to expand roads and build parking lots. The session were briefed on the result of the implementation of this summer afternoon outdoor work ban in 2019 by the Minister of Labor and Social Development, which showed that concerned bodies in the ministry conducted more than 11,000 inspection visits and 99.5% of the inspected establishments have complied with the ban. The cabinet discussed a draft resolution to amend certain provision of decision 4 of 2014 on regulating work permits for domestic workers and those who are similar. The cabinet reviewed a number of agreements and memoranda of understanding between Bahrain and Indonesia and Hungary and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs. The meeting discussed Bahrain's ratification of the primary system and joining the Organization of Islamic Cooperation's Action Center. The cabinet referred to the Council of Representatives a draft law to add a new article to the penalties law issued Decree 15 of 1976 based on the proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The cabinet discussed three proposals and approved the government's responses prepared by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on increasing disability allowance, suspending Mazaya program and adopting the previous program and amending certain conditions in the Mazaya housing program. In the item of ministerial reports, the cabinet took note of the results of the fifth session of the Committee of GCC Ministers of Labour and the Committee of Ministers of Social Affairs held in Oman, the result of the London International Shipping Week and the DSEI Defence, Aviation and Security Exhibition and signing the MOU between the National Space Science Agency and the British Space Agency and meeting with Van Brock Company to discuss the Bahrain Air Show 2020 in UK as well as the results of the meeting of the Higher Committee of the Arab Council for Health Specialties, which was held recently in Cairo.
The personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed Bahrain's keenness to implement the objectives of the Montreal Protocol to substances that deplete the ozone layer, explaining that Bahrain is committed to the Vienna Convention for the protection of the ozone layer and the, to protect the planet from the ultraviolet rays destroyed by the expansion of the ozone layer in the atmosphere. On the occasion, His Highness said in order to keep this environmental issue alive for the international community, Bahrain celebrates the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer thanks to the directives and support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness expressed thanks to all members of the Council and those interested in the environmental affairs and the implementation and completion of environmental plans and projects that contribute directly to the preservation and protection of the ozone layer. Thanks to these efforts, Bahrain has won many awards for its outstanding role in implementing projects that prevent and reduce ozone-depleting gases. He pointed out that the Council, in cooperation with the relevant government agencies and active partnership with civil society organizations and institutions, is accomplishing many important projects that contribute to the gradual reduction of ozone-depleting gases. Sheikh Abdullah also pointed out that the Council was successful in launching a program to rehabilitate workers in the air conditioning sector. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the closing ceremony of the second edition of the Saudi Crown Prince Camel Festival. The festival was held under the patronage of His Royal Highness of Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and organized by the Saudi Camel Federation, represented by the organizing committee of the Saudi Crown Prince Camel Festival at the Camel Racing Field in Taif. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the outstanding efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in supporting the camel sport, which is considered one of the most prominent heritage sports. He commanded a remarkable organization of the festival, which witnessed wide participation of camel owners, which reflected on the level of performance. He congratulated the winners, wishing the other participants better luck in upcoming events. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, received a delegation from the Russian State Duma, led by the member of the Committee of International Affairs and president of the inter internal parliamentary group, Borghini Irmakov, on the occasion of their visit to the kingdom. Saleh affirmed the importance of bolstering bilateral cooperation and the exchange of expertise in the legislative field, hailing the fraternal relations which received the support of His Majesty the King and his Russian counterpart for further growth for the two countries. He noted that the high levels that the bilateral relations reached 
are a source of pride, especially in the legislative, education, economy, investment, tourism and commercial exchange fields. He highlighted the role of the State Duma in organizing and holding various meetings between world legislative and parliamentary councils. The delegation expressed pride in the development of their Bahraini-Russian relations, which comes in line with the two countries' leaders' keenness on increasing joint cooperation. The Ministry of Forks, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning signed four agreements with the UN Food and Agriculture Organization in light of the strategic partnership between Bahrain and the UN agencies. Minister Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf stated that the first agreement is concerned with developing a strategy for diversifying food sources in support of food security in the kingdom. The second is concerned with strengthening the systems databases and agricultural statistics in the kingdom. The third with supporting the sustainable development of the agricultural sector in Bahrain. And the fourth with combating and eradicating human and animal diseases and improving animal breeds in Bahrain. Well, um, this is a great occasion for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations to be back in uh, Bahrain to collaborate with the government of Bahrain in uh, a number of areas that are critical for the sustainable development of the country, uh, areas that are part of the uh, sustainable development country framework of the UN, you know, this strategic framework that has been developed together with a number of other UN agencies. This, the work that FAO is going to contribute is an, an essential part of that, of that strategic uh, framework. The Minister of Forks, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, opened yesterday Bahrain Smart City Summit 2019 in the presence of senior officials and with the participation of more than 30 keynote speakers and experts from the public and private sectors. The Minister noted the Ministry's keenness to carry out proposed for initiatives and in developing smart cities within the framework of implementing developments and infrastructure projects in accordance with modern trends. He pointed out the Ministry's efforts to achieve the vision and contribute to attaining the global sustainability development goals by organizing the fourth edition of the conference and creating an associated exhibition with the participation of over 20 parties from the public and private sectors. He announced the opening of the first seafront fully dependent on renewable energy, P18 seafront project this month. He said that the project will serve as a starting point for other new ones as part of the ministry's future policy like using solar energy in agricultural projects. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, led Bahrain's delegation to the 30th International Conference of Islamic Affairs Supreme Council held in Cairo. The conference is held under the patronage of the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, and brings together delegations from 40 countries, including ministers of Islamic Affairs, muftis, senior representatives of Muslim communities, in addition to experts from Arab, Muslim, African, and European countries. During the opening session, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed asserted that the nation is still facing several challenges that consume its energy, weaken its resources, and destabilize its security and stability due to groups and parties whose personal interests prevailed over the public one. He also stressed the need for people to understand the nature of the modern state and the importance of preserving it, its unity, security, and stability through maintaining civil peace. A reception ceremony was patronized by the commander of the Royal Guard, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to honor the Bahrain Defense Forces Special Duty Forces for their participation in Operation Restoring Hope. As part of the Saudi-led Arab coalition in Yemen, the Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard decorated the Special Duty Forces on behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in appreciation for their performance of the patriotic duties in solidarity with the legitimate Yemeni government. The ceremony was attended by a number of BDF officers along with families of the Special Duty Forces. A parliamentary delegation headed by the member of the Representative Council and Second Deputy Speaker Ali Ahmed Zayed in the committee meeting, which is based on the Executive Committee of the Arab Parliamentary Federation, which is being hosted by the Jordanian Council of Representatives. The head of the delegation said that the committee has discussed changing the organization's code after adding a number of suggestions by various Arab parliamentary delegations. 
the National Health Regulatory Authority, an independent regulatory body providing provision of health care. And Bahrain is holding its first Bahrain Health Regulatory Conference 2019 to be held for three days on the 28th to the 30th of November 2019. On the occasion, an HRA Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Mariam al Jalahma, said that the organization of such event is in line with the National Economic Vision 2030 in relation to improving the health sector and making Bahrain a hub for medical tourism. She added that in health regulations, it is very important to make the patients feel safe and professionals making their acts right. The National Bureau for Revenue held two interactive workshops recapping general sector specific VAT concepts, including invoicing and filing. The attendants were given the opportunity to visit the unique interactive demo center that provides innovative learning experiences to ensure effective implementation of VAT. Today's workshops are a continuation of a series of workshops organized by the NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sectors in order to increase business awareness of VAT return filing procedures ahead of deadlines.